Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going to be going through the newest banner featuring Sephiroth and Lucia, but before we get into all that, I want to talk about the new uh, banner culture that is kind of happening in Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Last video I did that was on a banner, I noted that there were four banners simultaneously. We currently have three. We've got uh, the Limit Break one featuring Vincent still. That's going to be around for about five more days. We also have a Vincent and Aerith banner, and then we've got the newest featured banner that we're going to be talking about in this video. But when I talk about the banner culture, um, that was kind of that term was kind of coined by somebody in my Discord. We were talking about you know what's going on with all these banners and people feeling obligated to pull and things of that nature. So anybody who has seen many of my videos, you know that I am a big fan of getting more. I love that they're coming out with banners on a very regular basis, much more frequently than they were, say, six months ago. And the reason I like this is because uh, it's variety, right? The more banners that we have, the more characters get stuff. And with the, you know, as they keep adding more characters, you know, you're you're gonna want to build specific characters. And instead of having to wait months and hope that your, you know, one of your characters that you like gets featured, uh, if they if they put more banners out you have more chance to try to pull what you need. But with that, I know that there's going to be people who feel maybe compelled to pull on every single banner or a lot of them. And while I enjoy there being a lot of banners, I can tell you I'm still pretty picky about what I pull for. I don't pull on everything. I do give everything some consideration. But at the end of the day, I make my piece that maybe something is a little bit more overpowered than I anticipated and I missed it or, you know, just whatever, like something, you know, changes with the game and a character, you know, becomes more popular or whatever it might be. I just make my peace with it. It's okay to not have everything you need at the moment or not have the most meta stuff. And I'm gonna probably speak more on this and more in depth uh, when the next banner that comes out for the next guild battle comes, because I think that's where it becomes kind of a bigger problem but I do want to go ahead and say this now. As far as guilds go, you know, if you're in a whale guild, that's one thing. But if you're not, you should never feel like you have to pull on a banner that you otherwise wouldn't want to pull for. And to that end, and I will say this again more in depth in the future, but if anybody is, you know, finding it where they're being pressured by their guild to pull for things uh, just to be able to compete in the current event or do better, uh, or it's getting, you know, it's gotten kicked out of a guild for refusing to do that. I just want to let you know, you are free to come to my Discord. We can always make a third guild. We currently have two. The other one's not mine. It's called Phoenix, but they assemble on my Discord. And I would absolutely make another room for a third guild if that is necessary. I don't want to tell you, hey, don't worry about this and then give you no solution. So keep that in mind. But with the banners... Otherwise, uh, I just want to say that, like, you know, for example, I didn't pull on this banner. I didn't pull on it, even though I knew it would have been good for the guild battle. I had one of the, I was one of the lower scoring members in that. And I think that is perfectly fine. And the reason I think it's fine is, again, this game is more of a team game in, in so many aspects than many gotchas uh, where you're kind of doing more individual stuff. And... You know, nobody really had much of a problem needing carries for crash battles, right? Um, that was always kind of an accepted thing, and that's teamwork. And I think it should be the same in guild battles and any other, you know, cooperative content where there's always going to be people that are stronger, especially with specific elements. Those people step up, and, you know, when it's your time to be weak, if that's what it is, then you do it, and you do the best you can, but you should not feel compelled to spend money for sure or spend saved crystals if it's not something you want to do. And I think it's the same with just regular banners as well. I didn't pull on this banner. Do I think that some of these weapons and costumes are good? Of course I do. But I've been saving. And I've been saving for the one year anniversary since the last banner that I pulled on. I've also been spending. I haven't, you know, hidden that at all. And I probably will spend more and more in the future. And that's a whole different topic. But it's due to life changes that I've had and, and other things of that nature. 
you should not feel compelled to do that, okay? It should be your own thing, and, and there's no reason for you to feel like you need to compare your account to anyone else's. Just do the best you can with what you have, and always try to remember to have fun. When I, when I pull on some banners, like Hate Sith, maybe it's gonna be a while, right? Before he gets another one. And I wish he would, but I still don't regret pulling on Kate. I liked the flavor of his kit, that's what I did. And so, although I am saving for the anniversary, if I felt like I really wanted something on one of these banners, I would pull for it. And if I don't, or if it's not the best move for me, I just don't, okay? Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that I touched on that. If you have comments, questions, concerns, whatever, please drop them in the comments. Uh, I'll try to respond to as many of them, at least in the first few days as I can. Um, and if there's something that I think, you know, hits on another note, I will be sure to include that when I talk about this again in a future video. Okay, so, as I said, we have another banner, and this time Lucia's getting some more attention, which is good. Uh, you know, she doesn't really get a whole lot, and so I think that's, that's a great thing. Now, whether or not you care about Lucia, right, that might be another thing. But we'll go ahead and get into this, and I'm going to start with Lucia. Uh, as far as the outfit goes... I think it's excellently done. Uh, I think this looks super elegant, classy, you name it. Uh, big fan. As far as the gun, I don't really care, um, but I like it. It's called the Entrapment Gown, and what it does, boost poison resist plus 15, which if you click on it, is a 100% resistance to poison. Pretty helpful. Um, you know, on a single character, maybe not as big of a deal at the moment, but Poison is a really annoying skill, so I definitely don't find there to be a problem with that. But what I really am interested in is this alluring ploy. Physical and magical defense plus 20%, that is quite the boost. And the fact that it's quite a boost to both physical and magical makes this outfit very flexible. And then it also gives 10% to physical and magical attack. I think this is an amazing R ability. I think for that reason, this gown is very good. I don't run Lucia very much, and don't really expect to in the future, although this could be meta for sure. I mean, Lucia can be a good utility hero, and one of the things that you're always kind of worried about on them is getting things like HP and defense, survivability in general, up. So I do think that this is great. The poison resist to me is a bonus on this. I think it would be great if it only had this. and. You know, with the poison resist, who knows uh, what we're going to have in the future, if there's going to be more dragon type fights, etc. Coming over to the card that Tom Rom made, you can see here that there's never been an R ability that gave poison resistance. Uh, the fact that this is 100% is obviously about as good as you could expect for something like that. And the other thing that's kind of interesting, and there was a little bit of a chat about this uh, in, in our guild chat, is that the fact that this alluring plot, right, this ability here, is the same as Barrett's Indomitable Soul ability. Uh, they've just renamed it, which is interesting because it makes it sound like it's a brand new R ability. However, it isn't. Uh, I mean, it, it does the same thing, but they've changed the name. Uh, some people might be a little bit disgruntled with that, but I think it's just fine. I think it just provides a little bit more flavor to this particular unit uh, or this costume, you know, as compared to, you know, bear it right alluring plot i think maybe goes along with lucia better than it would bear it an indomitable soul you know bear it seems like you know he's kind of a hard ass so i think that makes a little bit of sense but either way i do think this is a great ability obviously i didn't get it on bear it i kind of wish i would have because bear it has started to become more and more useful as you know just like this i guess less and less niche uh, utility character and he was really really useful in the last guild battle so this might be something that's worth picking up if somebody is pulling for this. I don't think this is bad to go for. Her weapon is called Nightjar. And again, this has a lot of utility in my opinion because it knocks out two birds with one stone. Uh, starting at OB6 here, you can see physical defense decrease, potency high, and uh, when buff is granted to self. If you have a buff on Lucia, magic defense is decreased, potency mid, and it does not ever go to high but it's still giving you both physical and magical defense. And even at five star, it's mid and low, which is still pretty good because ultimately you're still getting a total of three arrows out of one cast. Uh, the damage isn't very good, but three ATB is also 
extremely good. Uh, boost HP, boost ability potency, that's just fine. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, ability potency is, you know, usually on my lower side as far as our abilities go, but the boost HP, 54 points at OB6, 62 points at 10, and even 40 points at 5 star, that is quite good. If we look at the support material, it's got a sigil break on it. I mean, honestly, I think that makes this weapon very, very useful. Again, coming over to Tom Rom's info card, uh, we're showing here what the difference is between OB0 and OB1 or five star and OB1. And you can see the damage goes up by 40%. The duration goes up by two seconds. And other than that, there's no real change to the C ability. And being that this weapon is, you know, straight utility, I don't think it's necessary to take it to OB1 because normally I'm looking at damage from the C ability or something along those lines. Here, we don't really uh, we don't really care too much about an extra 40%. That's not why you're using this. So uh, just note, it's worth just picking up a copy if you can get one. The next big one would be OB6, basically, where you get this high potency straight out of the gate. As far as the R abilities, you get your normal two point boost to each one. Again, not the hugest deal in the world. So that's what you have from five star to OB1 for those of you who are interested. Now on to Sephiroth. And this is the one that really made me think uh, about whether or not I'm going to pull on this banner. So starting out with his outfit, it's hands down my favorite outfit for Sephiroth. This gives me like some real Zack vibes with the way that they dressed him up in a couple uh, outfits a couple of times ago. I really like it. Uh, it's not like I think it's kind of flashy in the ways that intrigue me and not in the way that turn me off, you know, as those go. So I'm pretty into that. Uh, also, this sword looks really cool, in my opinion. I even like the the roses they've got on it, the spikes, the chain. I, I, I think this is s plus as far as cosmetics go uh what does it do what is it called it's called dark attire and it is an earth arcanum so at this point and i'm going to pop over to uh, tom rom's info card here i just want to show there are now four earth arcanums in the game you have shinobi hawk for yuffie stray dog for vincent and holiday cheer for lucia each one of these is an earth arcanum and now we have sephiroth the difference to me being that, you know, Lucia, again, doesn't get a whole lot of play. Vincent's brand new. You know, some people might not have pulled on him because of the fact that he's new and it takes a lot to kind of invest in a new player or a new character, rather. And then Yuffie, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm sure a lot of people have her, but I don't know how many people pulled on this. I still do not have an Earth Arcan. So <laughs> Sephiroth coming along and getting one that's kind of a big deal for an account like mine. Adding to that, you have Magic Ward. So 5% HP, 15% Magic Defense. Always love to see it. I am perfectly happy with this. I think this is a great costume and very, very much contemplating whether or not to pull a page to get this because ultimately my, my main three DPS units that I've been building have been Tifa, Sephiroth, and Cloud with the emphasis mostly on Tifa and Sephiroth. So I was hoping Tifa might get an Earth Arcanum, but now that they've put out the fourth one, it could be a while before we see another one. I don't really know. However, Anniversary is still around the corner, and I'm sure that we're gonna see at least one, if not two more banners, maybe even three before the Anniversary comes. So there's all kinds of things, uh, especially if you're free to play and you're saving, that you really, a lot of decisions you've gotta make. Okay, on to his weapon, Blue Bramble. Now, again, this is going to be wishlistable, so unlike the outfit, you know, you can get this at any time. How good is it? At OB10, Magic Attack plus 46, Earth Potency 39, nothing special to me there. I'm going to talk about this kind of based on my account because it's, it's very hard to know with four Earth Arcanums now where everybody is. But I can tell you from my account, I got OB5 uh, Chiron for Vincent, which is his Earth Breach weapon. And, you know, I'm one away from OB6, which gives me a high potency Earth down. And that is the main use for Vincent right now in my parties, right? If I need Earth, 
He's the debuffer. I don't really have a big earth hitter because I didn't pull uh, on his limit break banner. So I don't have white dog and you know, that's, that's a weakness for my account. From my account, based on the things I've just said, what I don't like about this, okay? Yes, the earth resist down or the earth breach, that's great. It starts off at mid, goes up to high starting at OB6, which is all very standard. But because he gets all of this, his damage is a bit lower than weapons we've been seeing that only do the damage and don't have the secondary ability. So you can see here, it only goes up to 700% at OB10, where remember, you know, a weapon that would have been similar to this without the breach in the beginning of the game would have probably capped around 620% or so. So it's not much stronger than stuff we were seeing when the game first released as far as damage goes. Now, from a all around perspective and efficiency, is this really good? I think so. For 4 ATB, you get a breach and the damage. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's amazing. I, I think that's really good. However, I with Vincent, I, I wouldn't really need this Earth breach as much. I would rather see this closer to a thousand percent. That's how I would feel like I would get the most bang for my buck for my account doing Earth damage. Now, with this, then I, I mean, there's the argument. Well, I don't need Vincent. And that would be true. However, White Dog is still available. And if you were going for just the strongest Earth combo, I think that it's probably better to still go back and pull for White Dog if you don't mind using Vincent. I don't want to try to build him up in that manner at the moment. I'm still on that boat, right or wrong. So for me, it, it's just not quite good enough to want to rush out and get it. Not to mention the fact that Vincent's is a limit break banner, which means there's more guaranteed copies of it, which means it's a lot easier to, to you know, basically harder in the long run to reach OB6 because you can't wishlist it, but easier in the short run. And it's a better weapon, a stronger weapon, in my opinion, uh, at least, you know, with the way his combo is going to work. I, that's how I feel. So. Is this worth getting? It really depends on your account, what you already have and what you need. Yes, I still need Earth. And normally I would probably go for all of this anyway, um, but the anniversary is around the corner. And although I'm spending, I'm still being choosy on what I pull for. I'm not just willy nilly pulling for everything that catches my attention. So this is just not gonna do it for me. And you know, I think that's perfectly fine. And you know what? Maybe I'll still be weak with Earth, which is obvious. That's okay, right? Eventually, the way they rotate things, there'll be another element that comes up. Wind, water, fire, whatever. And I'll, I'll shine there, and then I'll patch up Earth, you know, when, when I have a moment to. When we look at the support materia, uh, Triangle Sigil Boost is great. Uh, magic, magic, yep. And this is, again, magic Earth damage, so this all makes sense. And I think otherwise, like I said, I think it's a good weapon. I think giving him an Earth Arcanum is very cool. I want it, but not bad enough to dip into my 23,000 crystals because I know that to pull for a page of this, you know, that could easily take 24,000 crystals. Uh, I mean, eight pulls. I think that's give or take average. I'm not willing to go down to zero when we, I mean, we cannot be more than about five weeks away from the anniversary. And, I, you know, I just know that there's going to be better stuff. I know, well, I don't know, but I assume there are going to be limit break banners. It's going to be stuff, uh, you know, where we're going to see more guarantees on more pages, etc. And even as far as spending, I'm sure there's going to be better packages in the shop to spend on. So... I'm not ready to pull the trigger on this one. Um, they got me with the last limit break that they brought back, and I have no regrets on that. But I'm really, really saving unless they introduce something that's just super amazing in the meantime, or for a character that is that brings something to the table, like something for Tifa or Cloud. Sephiroth was a close one, uh, but it's just not there for me. It's not quite there, so I'm not going to pull. Uh, I would be very, very interested, though, to hear what you guys think. Uh, we've had a lot of debate, I can tell you, in my Discord about whether or not 
to go for this, or if you were going to, maybe going back and getting this instead. You've still got five days to figure that out. And again, if you look at White Dog, right, 940% is where that max is out. That's an additional 240%. And when a debuff is granted, it's 1.2 times the damage. That brings the total up to 1128%, which is more than 400% more damage. That is huge. Plus, it's got the same Earth Potency, but it's got the boost magic attack all allies. I don't I don't care. I know that it, it's not uh it doesn't have the breach on it, but to me, I think this is just a better weapon. There are other ways. I think you can you can work in an Earth Breach. Hell, you could even use Sephiroth to breach, but he has Chiron, Shiron, I don't know. You he has that. He has ways to do it himself. It does cost more casts, but still, uh, that other weapon even has a buff debuff extension for the R ability. So, you know, frankly, it's better in my opinion. And so it's still available. I don't know, like I said, I'm not investing in Vincent, so that's where I am. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really curious to see. One last thing before I forget, I do have an info card as well for Blue Bramble. And you can see from five star to OB1, the damage goes up from 440% to 510%. Uh, not a bad bump. Uh, the duration, you know, we don't really care. Potency is the same, so everything else is the same. You do get three points to magic attack, but only one point to earth potency. So, I mean, yeah, obviously, if you're going to grab this weapon to actually use it, going to OB1 for the extra 70% damage is a thing. Keep that in mind. Um, other than that, subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.